Hey guys, it's Judy. How are you? Um, I am here for a blog hop with Stencil Girl and Walnut Hollow. And they've asked me to come in and see what we can, how we can mix the two products together. So what I'm going to do today is decorate a beautiful wooden box. I'm going to show you how to um, take metal foil sheets and with the stencil and make an embossed metal sheet using that stencil and then we'll decorate the box so let's get going and can I just tell you we are in the middle of another snowstorm but this is the second snowstorm we've had this week and um, where I think we're all pretty tired of it us New Englanders so um, let's just do some art and forget about the snow and um, have a little fun so Let's get going. I'll show you what we're going to do. Okay, so what I need to do here, and my, room, my little desk is a mess here, but this is the box that from Walnut Hollow that I need to decorate. So, and I did, it was pure wood, um, unstained, so I just put a quick coat of gesso all over it. I didn't want to bore you with that, so I did it ahead of time. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue ephemera all over this, papers, maybe some um, some foils, I don't know, whatever I want, napkins, I'm just going to just cover the sides all around here and I will put that in fast motion so I won't, um, I won't bore you with that. Okay. Okay, so far I got this is dried. So you got the text on here. You got some decorative napkins. As you can see right through to the words on these napkins. They're so pretty. So I'm just going to keep on going. And I have some uh, lace fabric, some lace papers here. My favorite. I love that. Um, and some different kind of papers that my friend Corrine Gilman gave me that she handmade herself. So I'm going to incorporate some of those in there piece of paper that I did, um, you know, some other tissue papers that I had stamped. So I'm going to keep on going and then I'm going to uh, decorate the whole thing and then we'll get into the section of the um, using the stencil, okay? Hey everyone, just wanted to show you uh, the final sides of my box here. So I added some red and I stenciled some red dots through one of these um, coffee cup holder cardboard thingies that you get at like Panera or one of the other fast food places. And um, I added some butterflies and some flowers. And you can just see I put some black and white here for some pop. And that's pretty much it. And then I took a coating of Collage Page. And it's glossy. And I went around the whole thing. And I just really like the way it feels because nothing's tacky or sticky or anything. So now comes the fun part of what am I going to do with my stencil from Stencil Girl. So I'm going to show you that in a close-up. What I want to do is I want to emboss the whole top of this with metal, with uh, metal embossing. So, what better stencil to use than this one by Maria McGuire? It's just this gorgeous um, butterfly stencil here, and it just fits perfectly on top of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this metal embossing sheet and you can get this uh, I have had this so long that I can't even remember where I got it but it's called art emboss and um, it comes in like a tube like this and it comes in a sheet 
and you can get them online. I think I got this at a at a craft store. I don't know, but you can get them online. Art emboss. And so I'm going to take this sheet and I'm going to put indentations with the butterfly on here. But I want to show you an example first before I get started with the big one. Okay. So what you can do here is you take an old mouse pad because it's nice and flexible and it's cushiony. Okay. And I'll do a little section of it. And here's a little piece of embossing foil. And what I want to do is I want to put the embossing foil down on this on the mouse on the mouse pad. And say I want to just, you know, do any part of a stencil here. And I have this little stylus tool. Uh, you know, I've, again, I've had this for a long, long time. I covered it with clay for a handle. But um, you can use a rounded chopstick, too. But they also have tools for metal embossing, like little balls and little indentation things. But this is what I have. And it's a good idea to tape down the metal to the stencil. But I'm just going to show you. You want to work on the back of the stencil of the uh, embossing, and you're just going to gently just indent each thing. Now it might take a while; it depends on how detailed your stencil is. So just relax, enjoy it, and um, you're just going to go through. Don't press too hard; you want to go through it, but just enough to indent it. Because, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that it puffs up on the opposite side. Okay, so there's that. And then you can see that it's all puffed out here. Let me get you a close-up of that. See, so that's one side, and that's that side. So you want to get a good indentation of that. And then once you're done with everything, you can go around and go around the outside of the puffed edges to bring them out more. Okay, now that you've taken your, you've taken the taped stencil off the back, and then you've got your gorgeous butterfly, you're going to take some wood icing, you can get that at Stencil Girl, and then you can take a palette knife, or you can take an old credit card, whatever you want. What you're going to do is you're just going to scrape the wood icing and you just got to fill up these holes. So just start from the top and just fill it in. See how it's filling in everything here? Okay. Just basically just one coat because what you want to do is you want to fill up these holes, get them hard so they don't collapse on the other side. You don't want them to come back down. So I'm just going to go in and just get them filled up. And you can also use like a spackle if you want, you know, the kind that you use for walls to fix wall repairs. But I just love this wood icing. And that's basically what I'm doing. I'm just filling up any of the holes want to get a nice smooth nice smooth backing here okay and if there's any bumps you can sand wood icing later you can just sand it right across get a nice just like doing a wall in your home Okay, that should be enough for everything. Just make sure you get all the spots. 
And what you want to do is you're going to let this dry completely. And it doesn't take long for it to dry. Um, so just get all your holes filled. And then the, they will be perfect for our next step once this dries. Okay, so now the wood icing is completely dry. And, you know, it's got some bumps on it from the texture, so I'm just going to go around it lightly. Um, this is a 400 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to get rid of anything that's really bumpy and, and uh, rough. Okay, so this butterfly is nice and hard now, so if I push down on any of these, these uh, bubbles, they're not going to go down. They're not going to collapse because the wood icing is protecting that. Okay? So, so then I'm going to take a lighter bit of sandpaper, and I'm going to sand on the purple now. And that's what's going to bring up this. It's going to get rid of all the color off the metal, and it's going to bring up this beautiful... So here we go. Just gently brush it off. You don't have to be rough with it. You just want to get the highlighted areas. So any raised areas are going to get scratched by the paper. Isn't that the cutest thing? I am just in love with that. So now the trick is to get this on top of the box. Now that I've glued the butterfly, I've cut it down as best as I could for the edges. Some of it's not perfect, but you know what? I might be able to just take some, um, some paint and go around the edge a little bit more. But it's just for me. It's for no one else. Um, and it's a big piece of metal to work with. And um, This is on its way to drying. And then what I'm going to do is look at my handy dandy clay stuff. I might have some butterflies here, but I think the butterfly on the front is enough. So I'm going to go through and decide what looks good and um, figure out what's the best thing for the, for the top of the box. And I will be back with the finished product. Well, guys, here I am. Box is done. Put some cute little cork feet on it. Isn't that cute? And I painted the inside on the top and all around. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but look how cool that is. I got my clay stuff on there. I got a face, hearts. I put some rhinestones all around it, and then of course I used a bunch of glitter glue, which I thought really gave it some really great pop. So, there you go. Collaged and decoupaged all around, and a cool box for something. Don't know. I hope you liked it. Thank you, Walnut Hollow, for the box, and thank you, Stencil Girl and Maria, for a beautiful stencil.